In this module, we will review how to turn the autopilots and or the FDs on. First, let us review how to engage the autopilot. Autopilot on. You are the captain and pilot flying. The autopilot is an assistance to the pilot to fly the aircraft. The autopilot works within the aircraft normal flight envelope. Therefore, the pilot can turn it on whenever the aircraft is within this flight envelope. Here, we are just airborne, above 100 feet from the ground. Engage Autopilot 1. The FMA confirms the engagement of Autopilot 1. As a general rule, when the captain is pilot flying, Autopilot 1 is used. When the first officer is pilot flying, Autopilot 2 is used. This ensures that each autopilot will be alternatively operated. The autopilot can be used just after liftoff from, say, 100 feet until the end of the landing rollout. In most cases, only one autopilot can be engaged at a time. However, in case of an ILS automatic approach, both autopilots may be turned on at the same time. This ensures the best level of redundancy required to safely achieve auto lands, auto rollouts, or low altitude go arounds. As a consequence, once cleared for an ILS approach, the pilot presses the approach push button to arm lock and GS modes. The second autopilot may then be turned on. Engage Autopilot 2. The FMA confirms the engagement status of both autopilots, as well as the resulting level of redundancy achieved, dual. This will dictate the minimum possible DH. You will see this in more details in the Guidance Mode modules. Now let us review how to disconnect or turn the autopilot off. You are now flying an automatic approach. When in sight of the runway, you decide to take over manually. To turn the autopilot off, you press the red Autopilot Disconnect push button, also known as Takeover push button, located on either side stick. Weather is fine. You are number one for approach. Disconnect the autopilot. Turning NAP off via the takeover push button triggers the following temporary warnings. One single cavalry charge or a warning. The master warning flashing several seconds and NAP off red message on the right column of the engine warning display several seconds. By pressing the takeover push button again, you will cancel all these warnings immediately. Notice that on the FCU, the AP lights are extinguished. On the FMA, AP1 plus 2 is no longer displayed. The approach capability is downgraded to CAT 1, and on the ECAM system, all warnings are now off. The recommended technique to set autopilots off is to press the autopilot disconnect push button on a side stick. They can also be set to off by acting on the side stick or rudder pedals with a force beyond a given threshold or pressing an autopilot push button on the FCU when the corresponding autopilot is on. These last two actions lead to a repetitive cavalry charge, a permanent activation of the master warning, and a permanent red autopilot off warning on the left column of the engine warning display. This is considered by the FG as an involuntary autopilot disconnection. 
The FG also drives the flight director FD symbols displayed on either PFD. The flight director is an assistance provided to the pilots to accurately hand fly the aircraft along a given segment of trajectory. The flight director provides guidance orders to the pilots as a function of the guidance modes and targets selected on the FCU. These orders are materialized by specific symbols, e.g. crossbars. The flight director symbols are displayed on either PFD. The symbols on PFD1 are driven by FG1. Those on PFD2 are driven by FG2. The engagement status of the flight director is indicated on the FMA. Here the flight director symbols are called crossbars and are referenced to the aircraft attitude symbol. To turn the flight director on or off, use the flight director push button located on either EFIS control panel. When a flight director is on, the green bars of the corresponding push button are illuminated. Here, both FDs are on. Let's turn them off. Each pilot presses on his FD push button. FD bars are removed from the PFD. FD engagement status is cleared on the FMA and FD push button green lights are extinguished. Note that we have switched the autopilot 1 off for you. When both autopilots and FDs are off, note that all mode fields, except the one of the autothrust, here MAC, are blank on the FMA. It is important to notice that if both FDs are set to off while autopilots are off, autothrust, if active, is automatically in speed mode or MAC mode. Let's now turn the FDs back on. Suppose that the captain presses his flight director push button first and then the first officer. FD1 is on. The crossbars are displayed on PFD1. The FMA on both PFD indicates 1 FD as FD engagement status, meaning that only FD1 is on, and the FD1 associated modes. Notice that FD1 push button illuminates on green on the FS control panel. Let us now turn the first officer's FD back on. Note. When both APs and FDs are off and you turn one of them back on again, it comes up in basic modes, vertical speed, heading, or FPA, track. Both FDs are now on. The crossbars are displayed on PFD2. Both FMAs indicate 1 FD2 as FD engagement status, meaning that both FDs are on, and the on side FD guidance modes. Note that FD2 push button illuminates in green on the FS control panel. As a general rule, it is strongly recommended to set both FDs on or off at the same time. Let's review the FD symbols. The FD crossbars consist of two independent bars, referenced to the aircraft attitude symbol. A horizontal bar indicating the pitch command, and a vertical bar, indicating the roll command. 
The roll bar is replaced by a yaw bar index for takeoff and landing rollout purposes from an ILS equipped runway. The yaw bar assists the pilot to properly track the localizer on ground while in low visibility condition. The principle of the flight director crossbars has been reviewed in the EFIS module. Let's review another flight director symbology. We have seen the flight director crossbar symbology referenced to the aircraft attitude symbol. The other flight director symbology is referenced to the flight path vector, FPV, or BIRD. The BIRD can be displayed on, off, on the PFD by pressing the heading, vertical speed, track, flight path angle push button on the FCU. Click on the heading, vertical speed, track, flight path angle push button. Notice that on the PFD, the bird is now displayed. On the FCU, the indications have been modified to reflect the change to track flight path angle. Let's have a closer look at the PFD. The flight path vector FPV is displayed. The crossbars are removed and replaced by the flight path director FPD referenced to the flight path vector. In case flight director bars are displayed and the guidance modes are vertical speed and or heading, these modes are automatically changed to track flight path angle if you select the bird on. Have a look while we do this for you. First check that the flight path vector is displayed. You can see that the mode changes are outlined on the FMA with white boxes. Notice also that the heading target has been changed to a properly synchronized track target. D reverts to The flight path vector is the best flying reference to fly a stabilized segment of trajectory, i.e. an approach, but attitude is the best suited flying reference to fly a dynamic maneuver, i.e. a go-around. You will further practice the use of the flight path vector and FPD during the simulator sessions.